For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Stephen Gallagher. I'm a Red Hat employee, and I've been uh, working on in Fedora for over a decade now. Um, so, what is what is Fedora Server? Uh, in what is now apparent to me is the distant past. We used to have only one version of Fedora that we uh, released and shipped. Uh, this was six years ago now. And over time it had become apparent that even though Fedora's beginnings had been in the server space, people wanting to run, uh, uh, run servers on commodity hardware, time had passed and in many ways uh, the desktop had taken over the uh, Fedora community and it was much more focused on producing a desktop uh, distribution than it was uh, giving a place for uh, for uh, people to develop server technologies. So we uh, did what was then called the Fedora Next initiative, which involved uh, splitting the distribution into a variety of, uh, of different editions, uh, one of which was uh, Fedora Server Edition, which was going to be focused on uh, specifically server technologies, providing a, uh, providing a base platform uh, for your uh, well, the, the traditional metaphor is the in uh, pets versus cattle, uh, but I, I prefer to use uh, worker bees versus queen bees uh, because there's never, you're never going to have an environment uh, that doesn't have at least a few queen bees in it, no matter how uh, modern you've become. So uh, Fedora Server was meant to develop those technologies for the queen bees. And for a while we were, we were doing some interesting things, um, but they were pretty much... The, the 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 cockpit project is the major is the major success that we had early on, um, and that has uh, that has uh, expanded out and it has been a, a great success uh, on its own, has found a has found a very uh, very big following in the uh, rel community now. Uh, some of our other efforts did not go nearly so uh, smoothly, um, but ultimately uh, Fedora Server, and I say this with a very heavy heart has failed as a project. Um, it is, at this point in, in Fedora's life cycle, it is running, on, it is sitting on life support. Uh, it, I, I'm pretty much the only consistent uh, contributor to the project and I'm more or less just keeping the lights on at this point. Um, we've, uh, I've tried several t uh, times uh, to reach out to get more community involvement, but I think, well, Every time I've done that, uh, this has been the result. Um, uh, for, the, for those who don't uh, understand the reference, that's a critical failure in a, of a role in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, what I think is part of the problem uh, is that time has moved on and the problems that we just set out to solve uh, are either solved or no longer particularly relevant in the, uh, in the space. Added to that, the fact that uh, we couldn't really guarantee uh, an extended life cycle, which is something that is more or less uh, basic uh, entry into a server into the server space. We we tried to, for a long time to explain that uh, where we couldn't necessarily maintain the same version number for an extended period of time, we had gone to great lengths to make sure that the upgrade process was smooth and uh, wouldn't break very uh, wouldn't break on a regular basis. And in fact, we've been through several releases where, where our uh, Fedora releases, uh, our Fedora upgrades uh, broke uh, fewer things than the uh, than those rel point releases. <laughs> but we were uh, simultaneously proud and ashamed of that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you can't say this version will be supported for three years, people don't pay attention. So I think what we need to do is we need to bring uh, Fedora Server back to the drawing board. I think we need to decide anew what what is its purpose, and if and if it and if it doesn't have one, or if it does, what is it? And uh, come up with a new strategy for how to uh, for how to develop it. Ideally, in such a way that it encourages uh, more people to contribute to it. Um, First and foremost, uh, I don't think it will come as a surprise to anyone if it, um, if I point out that the intent, or, uh, the the not terribly subtle intent initially was we needed someplace in Fedora to very clearly 
be a, a, a staging ground for uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And while for a long time, because of uh, political reasons, we couldn't say that outright, <laughs> um, it, it, it is generally true. And I think that it may be the time to make that, uh, you know, re revisit this as a formal requirement as opposed to a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know, maybe, re uh, maybe uh, Daddy Shadow Man wants some, something. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm here to listen to ideas. Uh, I've got, uh, okay, there's one. I just had a comment that I think one of the other challenges that the server has is it also needs to delineate much more clearly what it's not. You know, I mean, like, so, hmm. you know, is it a cloud instance? Is it a vagrant instance? Is it not those things? Is it, you know, like, that's, I think, also been a big challenge for the server. Um, you know, it's like, what, what is its goal? And if it's not going to carry those other goals where everything just kind of falls in, where do those go instead? Right. Okay. Um, we're not recording, so I'm not going to bother repeating that. I think everybody could hear Langdon. He's got a good set of lungs on him. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I can tell you what the goals were initially, but again, my perspective on this is that uh, those are no longer uh, necessarily uh, valid. And I think what we need to, I, I think the first uh, thing we need to do is we need to go back and we need to uh, scrap the existing PRD, which is I think there might be a, a the in it that's still valid, but that's about it. Um, all of it is is irrelevant at this point. We don't longer have a concept of uh, server roles. We don't. Um, I, I think the only thing I think the only thing left in it that is uh, that is still useful is the uh, uh, requirements it sets down for cockpit. <laughs> but I'm not sure where to begin because. It's easy to say, okay, we need some place for new server technologies to be built, but we also need some, if you're going to build something, you need someone who's willing to test it. And in order to have someone who's willing to test something, you have to be giving them something that solves, their, uh, solves a problem. I am really hoping that, uh, there, that some of you guys can, uh, can, can just express a, a good problem that we could be solving here because we're in an odd place, like I said, because we have to have this addition uh, as it is is useful to uh, to our primary benefactor, but we also need it to be designed done in such a way that it is also that it is is actually useful both to us, and, uh, both to the Fedora community in general, and the Red Hat uh, the Red Hat uh, consumer directly. And uh, I'm not loving the silence. <laughs> so, so you're saying, what, what kind of workloads are we looking at? What kind of solutions are we looking at customers building on this? Yes. I mean... Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I was actually also going to point out that there's uh, another aspect to all of this that, uh, that makes things even more uh, fuzzy, which is the fact that... Uh, Almost anything we could do in, in the server space is going to be largely irrelevant in three to six months. And the reason for that is that, we're, uh, that uh, the Apple project is going to be shipping uh, modules for RHEL 8 that are built out of the Fedora, out of the Fedora environment, uh, the Fedora uh, the build systems. Which means that fundamentally, once CentOS 8 launches, people are, no one will ever install Fedora server, they'll install Cento, uh, CentOS 8, and they'll and then whichever Fedora modules they need from Apple. I don't necessarily think that's true. I mean, I spend a lot of time on new hardware development, and new hardware development means that kernel support has to be has to be correct long before it's going to be supported by RHEL. I mean, uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, new hardware is an interesting. Uh, an interesting point. I'm not sure if that's a... Next generation hardware is also a, a complication that, that I, see, I see people have that is the result of not having... And so when there's just a base level of support that I think gets overlooked uh, in terms of the, the speed of adoption. Right? And, and still yeah, well, no, sorry. Uh, a couple of additional hands were going up. I was just oh, letting... Okay. 
uh, uh, this gentleman has been tr trying to speak for a while. Fedora project. Because from what you're saying, you're basically, you're basically predicting or you're based on like current observation. You're saying that people are actually creating centers as some kind of like upstream in the sense of like freedom um, or availability um, compared to them so that people are looking into centers. Because they no, what I, was say, what I was saying, uh, I, w I wasn't actually uh, implying anything about CentOS currently. What I was saying is that what I imagine will happen is that uh, they'll take that stable, you know, stable long-term platform. And then because the, the primary reason that people use, the, the very few people that use Fedora Server today use it is because it provides newer packages than what we, they can get out of uh, RHEL and they need that for their environments. But with the, on, with the uh, you know, with the appearance of modules, they can now have that stable platform and their, and their new, uh, to, a to a certain degree, yes. Not everything, but my, my point is I think that that is going to uh, eat into our already tiny uh, d deployment. Uh, deployment. And that was pretty much my question because uh, it, it sounds like you are not actually blockchain, you are kind of like a fork or something different because Rally is free to take whatever decision you want in a different way and people actually want whatever decision Rally took, not whatever Fedora took. So let me uh, make one observation. Yeah, th th there was a pun in there.
the same role as somebody from a different directory. Without, well, in most cases, even without adaptation, because there's good level of kind of uh, adaptation in the uh, place and simple stuff. But yeah, still, I mean, it's, it did lose out on one aspect of the roles that was, uh, that was intended to be just part of the, uh, the, the cockpit over, overall, everything on the system should have an API idea that it should be possible to administer a single system without having to use uh, a, 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 an overpowered configuration management tool. Um, and we did, we lost out on that, but truthfully, yes, Ansible is the better choice for most things. And, and it's effectively an API that both can and should fall, whether it's on a single machine or on multiple machines, uh, for the typical role, because then you can reuse the knowledge that, that was shared by Ryan multiple teams. I pitched the same, uh, the same thing. The cockpit team disagreed, and uh, we're not going to rehash that argument today. <laughs> yeah, but cockpit uh, is not the only one. Langdon? Uh, so I was just going to say, um, particularly to the point about uh, you know, kind of the hardware uh, refresh problem, um, you know, some of the CentOS team members actually run Fedora kernels on with CentOS, right? Um, would potentially an idea be for Fedora server to embrace the CentOS 8, you know, killing it in a sense, and Fedora server actually produce kind of core bits that sent to, that would work with CentOS 8 to provide some newer hardware. So in other words, the server wouldn't actually be its own thing as much as a set of maybe module streams that you could plug into CentOS 8 that would let you use newer hardware. So it would become a, a CentOS variant? That's what you're suggesting? I would still, in a sense, it's still Fedora server, but like I'm just kind of saying is like embrace the CentOS mm -hmm. 8 part of it and the problem space that you're talking about of where you want to actually refresh new hardware and you want to kind of make sure it's going to work but then you have I don't know I don't know if that solves the same problem though because uh, like uh, Alexander was saying that uh, it there there is something to be said for integrating from top to bottom to have that upstream that will eventually become rel and centos 9 or whatever comes after 8 that uh, you know cuz I can't make forward looking statements so it might not be 9 who knows could it could be me for all I know Um, yeah, that, that would be terrible. Anyway, um, but I, I think we still do really need to have that integration from top to bottom somewhere. And the, I, I, think there, I think there is some sense in, make, in trying to make a focus, you know, supporting new hardware, but. It'd be nice. I mean, my, my, my thought on this is that I know this has been, I mean, I've, this is a one man show. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm preaching as someone who has, has professed a willingness to get involved, but hasn't gotten involved. So I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fault anybody for this. But to say, like, it would be nice if we could fail, if we could fail a lot louder, right? In terms of, in terms of hardware support and and, and system support. I, just in the sense that I spend a lot of time wandering around trying to make people support hardware that. Make people support, make people at Red, at Red Hat support hardware that doesn't exist yet, and and to do it. That gets really hard uh, for uh, actually mostly for legal reasons in Fedora is because uh, if if Red Hat isn't the one backing it, there's nobody who. Uh, th there's an awful lot of uh, NDA type stuff for pre-release hardware that makes things really difficult, uh, and that makes it hard to do that in Fedora. It makes it Well, <laughs> yeah, because I don't have to necessarily fail it outside the doors, and I don't have to file my bugs as public. Right, but a lot of it is still kernel enablement, which means you're still sending patches upstream that suggests. Oh well, no, I'm I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying that and say, I'm saying that in a lot of cases, even those kernel patches are, may remain embargoed until the hardware is released. So, and that's more difficult, not, not impossible, but more difficult to do in a public open project because it, you either have to s submit them and have them tested by the community or completely hide them forever.
At which point, why are you, at which point you're not really working in the community? Yeah, um, it's it, it's it's worth uh, examining, but uh, ultimately, I think you know the 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 queen bee side is still going to look a lot like what we have right now. I mean, one of the things, and I'm, I'm running low on time here because unfortunately, when I ha when rescheduling this talk, I had to be moved from a uh, 50 minute to a 25 minute session. Um, is uh, is is what I'm doing right now? The, just keeping the lights on. Is that still? Is, is anyone benefiting from that right now? Because I can continue. Okay, I can continue to do that for as long as needed. But it's still. Uh, but it's feeling like diminishing. Uh, like it's becoming a diminishing value. And I want to figure out how to revitalize that and ideally get somebody else to do some of it when I so I can occasionally take a vacation without getting paged. <laughs> um, Okay, thank you, Dominic. So, so what I'm hearing, though, is that most of the use cases are ones that consume what is produced, but not produce something that is really visible and tied back that is served to the community. Right? So the question is, what would be something, what would be useful feedback? Um, and it might not be like packaging collection with other, as with other additions. It could be, and I'm you know, slightly biased here, but if you think about intended behavior of the server addition. It could be feedback on what are stories that we want to have, or like policies that we want to have part of, uh, of engaging with. Like, even if hardware is new, and I can't release details on that, can I, can I somehow bring some of those aspects into testing to make sure that other pieces don't break that by accident? Can I, can I place those restrictions? Can I, can I share part of those stories? And that, like, if we identify Where you can codify 
I'm fond of saying that if, uh, if an edge case exists, free IPA will discover it. Yeah, and maybe that's and maybe that's a good way to go. And it, you're right; that may actually inspire some people to come in and contribute too, at least to write some of these tests because they, you know, that is their usage downstream. Yeah. 